Hey guys, it's Rishi once again, and today we're back with Pythagoras Theorem. So what is Pythagoras Theorem and who was Pythagoras? Well, Pythagoras was a Greek philosopher who made important developments in mathematics, astronomy, and the theory of music. And the theorem now known as Pythagoras' theorem was known to humans a thousand years earlier, but he may have been the first to prove it. So in today's video, I'm going to be going through all of the different types of Pythagoras questions, following through with the formula and how to work out these questions in a short and easy way. So let's go ahead and dive into this right away. So Pythagoras' theorem states that for all right angled triangles, the square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square on the two sides. So let's go ahead and understand what an hypotenuse is. Well, the hypotenuse is the longest side of a right angled triangle, which is opposite the right angle. So again, this is our right angle and it's opposite, and that is our hypotenuse. And as we said, that Pythagoras' theorem states that the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, which means 4.8 squared plus 3.6 squared will give us the hypotenuse. And that is exactly what we are after. So again, we'll have a squared equals b squared plus c squared. And that again is going to be a c squared, which is 4.8 squared plus 3.6 squared. And again, if we go ahead and calculate that, we can see that a c squared gives us 36. So now if we go ahead and make a c the subject, we're going to remove the squared and we're going to have a c equals square root of 36, which means a c will equal 6. And that there is our answer, 6 centimeters. So one thing to note here is that Pythagoras' theorem only works for right angled triangles. So you can use it to test whether a triangle has a right angle or not. So let's step back for a second and let's go through two main laws here. So in the triangle below, if a squared is less than b squared plus c squared, that means that the angle is acute. However, if the triangle below had a squared, which is greater than b squared plus c squared, which it was, then we know our angle A, for instance, would be obtuse. So just to reiterate once more, if this triangle had a squared being less than b squared plus c squared, then the angle A would be acute. But if the triangle had a squared which is greater than b squared plus c squared, then your angle would be obtuse. That's just one thing to note. So let's now go ahead and dive into question number two. So once again, we now have our hypotenuse, but we need to find out the length of a to b, which I'm going to label as x. So again, we know that we'll have b squared and c squared, which gives us a squared. So let's go for x squared plus 6.75 squared gives us 17.55 squared. We're then going to make x the subject. So this plus 6.75 will become a minus 6.75. And there we are. We'll then take the root over. So then we can simply root our answer. And that there would give us x as 16.2, and that is our answer. So I hope you can see what I've done here, how I've broken up the question to get the answer. Marvelous. Okay, over to question three. Let's calculate the length of BC here. I'll again put that as x. And we can see that we've got two smaller sides that we have to make the larger side. So I'll simply have x squared plus 6 squared equals 14 squared. But we can rearrange this 
by simply having 14 squared minus 6 squared gives us x squared. So we know that's going to be 196 take away 36, which gives us 160. So now we know x squared equals 160. So x must equal the root of 160, which then gives us 12.6. And that's all we had to do here. We're making x the subject. And that there is proof that it's the right angle triangle. Marvellous. Question number four. So calculate the length of AC, which again is our hypotenuse, so we know that we can add this right away. So we'll have 4.2 squared plus 5.6 squared, which gives us A to C. We know that is 49, which is AC squared. So now if we simply take the square over, we'll have root 49 equals AC, which in this case is 7. And there we are. Feel free to pause the video at any given time. It will take you time to understand the logic behind the Pythagoras' theorem. But once again, keep going, keep it consistent, and you'll understand it in no time. Marvellous. Let's go for question five. So let's calculate the length of AD. So again, I'll label this as X. And again, we don't have the length of AC, so I'll label that as Y. So the first thing we need to do is understand how we will get the length of AD. Well, we have the first two sides of this triangle, and we know 19 is the hypotenuse. So we can simply write 19 squared minus 14 squared will equal y squared. And so by doing this, we know that's 165 equals y squared. And if we take the root over, we'll know that the root of 165 is 12.8. I'll just add all the relevant numbers that we have. And the reason I'm putting it as the entire decimal is because this is not our final answer. And even so, when we get our final answer, we need to give the answer as three significant figures. So that is your part one done. So we now know y equals 12.8. And now we can use that alongside the 10 meters to calculate our x squared. And because x is our hypotenuse, we can simply add them together, which will be 10 squared plus 12.84523 squared equals x squared. And once again, feel free to compute that within your calculator, which gives us 265, which equals x squared. So then we'll have the root of 265, which gives us x, and that there will be 16.3. So that's our second step, and we are now done. So once again, I hope that was useful. I hope you can see how I've broken down this question into two simple steps, calculating the first side, AC, and then using that answer to calculate AD. You're doing really well by coming this far, so let's keep it up. And let's now dive into question six. So we now need to calculate the length of AB. So we'll label that as X, and we also need the length of AC to do this, so we'll label that as Y. So let's start off by simply calculating AC, and we'll have four squared plus seven squared equals Y squared, and we know that's going to be 65, which equals Y squared. So we can simply now have X squared plus 65, which equals 9.5 squared. So remember, y squared equals 65. So we now have that there. So we no longer need to work out the value of y because we're using this to work out our AB length, which is x. So I've substituted that in now. Let's go ahead and make x squared the subject. So we take this over and we'll have x squared equals 9.5 squared minus 65, which means x squared is now equal to 25.25. And if we root that, we'll get the value of x, which there becomes 5.02 to three significant figures. And there we are. So again, feel free to pause the video or rewind it. 
where you can then go through each specific step once more. But with that in mind, let's now dive into question seven. So ABCD is a rectangle, and we need to calculate the length of this diagonal AC. So again, I hope you can see how this forms a triangle for us. We have our 17 and 8, but we need to calculate it to find our hypotenuse. So we'll have 8 squared plus 17 squared gives us x squared. If we put that in a calculator, we get 353, which gives me x squared, which gives me x squared. And then if I root 353, that will give me x, which is 18.8. And that is my answer. So once again, don't forget to break down the question into simpler steps. You want to follow the same rule of a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and then rearrange that to make it fit the question you're answering. You're doing really well. Let's now go for question eight. So now we have a trapezium, and we need to calculate the length of BC. But how can we do this if it's not a triangle? Well, the first thing we're going to do is make a triangle. So we'll make a straight line here and label this as 15 centimeters, as it is the same as the one above. And then we'll go ahead and now calculate this value here. So We'll now take our y squared plus 15 squared, which gives us 17 squared. We'll then make y squared the subject, which is 17 squared minus 15 squared, and that gives us 64, so y must equal 8. And now we know that is 8, we can simply have 12 minus 8, which gives us 4, which is then the answer for x, which is bc. So now we know that 4 is our answer, for this specific question. So once again, what did I do? I found out that y was eight. So I subtracted eight from 12, which then gave me the value of this section here, which is also the same section for BC, and that there is four. I hope that was clear. Let's now move over into the final two questions, nine and 10. So for question nine, we've now been given an isosceles triangle. And we need to calculate the perpendicular height of A, B, and C. So we need to give our answer, correct three significant figures. And so the first thing we're going to do is label the question, label the shape. So we're gonna label our height as X. And if B to C is eight, then we know c to the center is four centimeters. Now we've done that, we can simply write x squared plus four squared will give us our hypotenuse, which is 10 squared. But if I rearrange the formula, we'll have 10 squared minus four squared give us x squared, which is 84. We can then root it, and that will give us 9.17, and that is our answer, 9.17. Amazing. I hope you now understand the, the, the level of detail we need to go to, and I hope you are clear with the steps. Once again, just to reiterate, the more questions you do, the easier it will become. So keep up the momentum, and let's now move over into our final question. So ABCD is a trapezium, and we now need to calculate the length of A to C, which is again, if I do a dotted line here, right across this. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a triangle straight across here. And I'm gonna calculate the value of that. But then again, I also need the, the side length. And the way I'm gonna calculate that is by simply having my eight, subtracting the three, which then gives me five. So now if I draw this out, do a basic sketch, we'll have five, 13, and we need to calculate our A to D. So I'll then have 13 squared minus five squared, which then gives me 144. 
And if I root that, that gives me 12. So now I know that my B and my A to D is 12 centimeters. But how does this help me with this particular question? Well, if we take a look, we can now take the larger portion of this question. Or again, I'll draw my right angle triangle. I'll have eight centimeters, which is, again, if I change the color, all of this across here, straight down to A, and from A all the way to C. So I have eight, 12, and then we'll take Y, which is what we need to calculate. So A, D, and C. You've now gone ahead and done that. So we know that Y is our hypotenuse. So all I simply need to do now is have my eight squared plus 12 squared, which equals my y squared. And I know that is 208, but when I root this, this simply gives me 14.4, and there we are. So my answer is now 14.4 centimeters. And that there brings us to the end of our session. You've done amazingly well by coming this far. We've gone through the laws, of Pythagoras theorem, and we've also understood what it takes for us to answer a specific question. We've not only focused on triangles, but we've also focused on other shapes like trapeziums, isosceles triangles, and quadrilaterals. So keep up the momentum. Don't forget that it can be used to calculate the length of any side in a right angled triangle. Keep up the great work and I'll see you in the next video.